decline, 10-9 suited in the cutoff. Announces himself. And here he is. Yeah, he'll not be losing Adamo. <clears throat> but TBD, how Michael elects to proceed. Flat from Adamo on the button. D opens the door for this Jack-10 offsuit for Foxen. Along he comes. Now to Bonomo. 10-6 suited. Price feels right for speculation. And he joins the party, closing the action. Four players, three of whom hold a 10. Early in the super high roller bowl, a $300,000 buy-in tournament that takes place at the Poker Go studio. Bill Klein, loose, aggressive, tricky player, opens it up to 35,000 chips, playing 10,000, 15,000 in the cutoff. Michael Adamo, who gets in there and battles harder than most, just calls the ace-queen offsuit. Decided to take it easy today. Alex Foxen in the small blind with Jack, 10 offsuits, decides to call, and look, I don't hate the call, especially since he's getting a little bit of a discount given it's 10,000, 15,000 blinds. Over to Bonomo in the big blind with 10, six of clubs, he opts to call two. And I think some people may look at Foxen and Bonomo's call in this situation. I think both of them are a little bit loose, but you have to realize when you're getting very good odds and you're probably not gonna get re-raised, it's okay to splash around a little bit. They both call. And we head to the flop four ways. Jack in the window, followed by a nine and an eight. And all three of those players whom hold a 10 have themselves an open ender. Bill Klein, though, has a little bit prettier version with the open-ended straight flush draw. Foxen with top pair. Currently holding the lead, a climb following through for 60,000 into the 155. Well, that is, Ali, and likely a call here from Foxen will push Bonomo out with just the naked open ender of sorts, although we shall see. It is a fairly friendly bet. Some reverse implied here at times for Bonomo. Odd little spot to defer. To the great Justin Bonomo, he's in. The flop comes Jack of Spades, Nine of Hearts, Eight of Spades, giving Bill Klein a straight flush draw and middle pair. That's pretty good. Giving Foxen top pair with a straight draw. That's pretty good giving Bonomo a junky straight draw, and giving Adamo two over cards and a gut shot. Everybody has the nuts. Checks around to Bill Klein. He goes for a 60,000 chip bet, about 40% pot, which I think is fine and good. He certainly doesn't mind getting money in the pot. He is playing 600,000 deep with his opponents covering him. So I think this is a fine spot to bet because if you bet and get raised, you can easily continue. You do have to be careful betting with draws that if you bet and get raised, you have to fold because you really don't want to fold out a decent amount of equity. But in this situation, I definitely think he can go for a bet because he can easily continue. Adamo, who I said likes to battle, he just lets it go. He has a gut shot, two over cards, no good with two players yet to act, plus Bill Klein betting. He gets out of the way very wisely. Over to Foxen, top pair and straight draw. I think his only option is to call. Here, he really does not want to raise and then get re-raised, right? That would be terrible. And then Bonomo has an interesting spot where I think I would have just folded a little bit early because there's no guarantee a straight's good if he gets there, especially once he goes bet and call. And when there's a flush draw on the board, when the seven of spades or queen of spades comes, he could easily be beat. So I think this is a spot, even getting good odds, even closing the action, I think it's probably right to fold because you're gonna have a really difficult time getting paid when you do make the nuts. 
Or when you make a straight, you're never gonna have the nuts, right? But when you make a straight, it's gonna be hard to get paid. And sometimes you make a straight and you still lose. So I think this is an okay spot to ditch it. But he takes the good pot odds, which I certainly don't fault him for. And we head to the turn. Oh, it does come in. Is that the stone cold biscuits for Mr. Klein? A straight flush, courtesy of the My seven God. of spades, leaves the field drawing dead. And note that both of his opponents have a straight as it stands now, Ali. So what a tremendous spot for Klein. Foxen has checked his straight. Bonomo checks his as well. Oh yeah, you can't fault Bill Klein for taking a gulp there. Look back and indeed, you my friend, have a straight flush. <laughs> Comes with 140. The turn is the miracle seven of spades for Bill Klein. He seems to be a rather lucky person at poker and in life. One time I played with him at the Poker Go studio and he got a hole in one in golf that morning. And then he won the $25,000 buying tournament in the same day. I'm happy for him, good job. I'm glad that some people do the good work and also maybe run a little bit hot too. Good for him. All right, he turns a straight flush. A little bit more luck for today. Both of his opponents turn straight. They very wisely check to him. This is a spot where you do not want to lead with your straight because it's important to realize that Bill Klein could easily have a flush here. He's going to bet the flop with some of his flush draws and he can easily have those, right? So if he does have a flush, obviously you don't want to be betting with a straight into a flush. Fine. Over to Bill Klein. The pot's 335. He has 600 left. He wants to go for an amount that will allow him to bet the turn and then reasonably jam the river. So I think if he goes something like 150, that will make the pot go up to 635 if he gets one caller and then he can easily jam for 450 on the river i love it and that's exactly what he does let's see how foxen and bonomo proceed with their straights if foxen were to march forward with a call which uh is highly uncomfortable i think most of us can feel that three spades there not the nut straight to boot but a straight nonetheless very curious to see Bonomo's procedures following this. Okay. Yeah, where are the boys at? Fairly uncharted waters here. It was four ways on the flop. Now it's three ways. We're likely chopping or losing, but nonetheless, a straight is a straight. And what a dynamite spot for Bill Klein. He's going to pick up a massive pot, cross the million mark, I do believe. Foxen has a pretty mandatory continue, I think, in this scenario, because there's no reason to think that Bonomo necessarily has a strong hand. And Klein could be bluffing with all sorts of random stuff, like Ace of Spades blank, if he decided to get aggressive. That said, is he going to be bluffing with Ace of Spades 9, Ace of Spades 8? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Stuff to say. But whatever. Foxen has a call. Should Bonomo continue here? Look, I'm not trying to fold straights very often, but kind of like his flop decision, it's kind of reasonable that, that you're beat here. I realize he's getting good odds and he's closing the action, but Klein set himself up to put it all in on the river, and it's a situation where I have to think Either someone has a flush, someone's drawing to a flush, or someone is chopping with your straight. So it's a tough spot. Again, I'm not going to say I would have necessarily folded, but I think it is more reasonable than a lot of people would think. Bottom of sixth round, though. He doesn't like to fold. Let's go to the river. And pair the board. Oh, and the board indeed does pair. Unfortunately for him, nobody has a boat. And he blocks the nine. May very well have not been thinking pair the board, actually. That's confusing, but perhaps some two pair lurks. Fox and checks. Gazes over at Bonomo, who will be doing the same, I believe, in relatively short order. Klein with 465, 755 out there.
Wow, Ollie. The rest has got to be en route here. Certainly close to it. No reason to hold anything back? Well, this is a customary tournament principle. You leave yourself a few, balance it out with your bluff so you have some life. I'm all in. He's going for them all. The river is the nine of diamonds, which is actually a horrible card for Bill Klein because now people will maybe be able to fold straights. That's okay. Check, check, over to Klein. He, of course, rips it in. Let's see if he can get paid. Ali, and what an odd little spot here for both men. Fox and out in Count, please. pretty short Count order. And for Bonomo, he has visions of ace of spades, queen, king of spades, queen, ace of spades, king, so on. These are the hands that we're really keeping an eye on. Kind of unfortunate that Bonomo is left... And I'm by no means saying that he should have folded flop. But I do think it was a consideration when Klein bets into three opponents and then Fox and calls. I might be off base on this. But certainly uncomfortable navigations on... But anyway, it was the nut bad run out and we've run into a straight flush. And yeah, sort of Bonomo has been left with the task of looking up Bill in this spot as Fox and passed the buck with his straight. Texture just bad with three spades. It's bad, but we, we, we have clear targets. And Klein open cutoff, but we have to find hands that bet flop for starters. These naked ace of spade hands have to fire flop into three people, so perhaps ace king is not in the equation. Maybe it's down to ace queen or king queen with the one spade. be six some odd combos of those and then we have to get really creative. I think Bonomo's going to let this one go after some deliberation. I mean, this would really be a hero call of the highest order. This 465 is a good chunk of his 1-1. One, one. Oh, absolutely. A vital sort of chunk. And even the overcall on turn is a little sketch. in poker too, Ollie. Sometimes when somebody has the stone cold nuts, it feels weird. It feels like air. This is something I've encountered many times over the years. It just does not feel right for a variety of reasons. It's like, ah, it's six queens or <laughs> what have you. This is an example of that where it's I suppose Justin might be thinking about counterfeited two pairs, but this is really a reach for Klein to take this line with something like Jack 8. Is that a time bank or the hand? It's another time bank. I mean... Hmm? And Klein, not uh, exactly a, a lunatic no, out there. No, he's, he's not known for being... But he has it in him, without a doubt. But This is effectively a bluff oh catcher. Oh my god, he does pay it off and he'll see the bad news and Yeah, shakes his head. A big sure. misstep yeah, for Bonomo and this seemingly was multiple missteps, perhaps. Boxen pretty easily folds, recognizing I could easily be against a flush. I could easily be against a full house. Sometimes my straight's chopping. Bad turn and bad river. Let's get out of here. Bonomo though is now in a really difficult spot because now he does not have to worry about the other player, Foxen, in this hand. He knows Foxen didn't have anything. So the question is, does Klein have enough bluffs in this situation to justify calling? And one thing you'll find about a lot of the, let's call them high stakes business player type players, they love to run aggressive bluffs. They love to put people in tough spots. This is very different than a lot of the, call them looser, splashier players in the small stakes games who like to see flops and like to try to make the nuts and then they put all their money in. A lot of the players 
who battle in the high stakes, they love making people fold. They like inflicting misery. And as nice as Bill Klein is, he has ran some savage bluffs while I've been sitting at the poker table. And I'm sure if you've watched his play at all, you know he can run some just very savage bluffs that you would not expect. Give him the ace of spades queen in this spot, for example. Maybe he decides to go for it. I don't know. So Bono has a tricky spot and you know he eventually does find a call. What I wanna know is what bluffs do you think he is logically putting Bill Klein on? I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna read the comments and I'll let you all debate this for yourself. But look, this is a tricky spot. I certainly don't fault Bonobo for calling, but again, I think you're probably supposed to fold. It's an annoying spot, that's for sure. It all started by a slightly loose preflop call and a slightly maybe loose flop call and maybe a slightly loose turn call and then maximum devastation on the river. That's me for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I realized this was a very, very difficult, tricky, very, very tricky multi-way pot. And I have another video I want you to check out discussing how to crush multi-way pots. It's going to be somewhere around here. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, click the like and subscribe button down below. Also click the notification bell. It will let you know next time we have a video. We put out a lot of videos for all of you to help all of you enjoy poker and improve poker. I just want you to enjoy poker and improve at poker. Good luck in your games. Have fun. If you make a straight and you're crushed, I hope you can find the full button. But if you don't, don't feel too bad about it.